RE9 is the biggest thing going on for the Resident Evil community and there's no argument about it. Summer Games Fest is on its way and it got me thinking about what can possibly happen in this title. There is this rumor going around that RE9 is going to be a closing chapter for some or one character and we don't know who that exactly is yet. It's obviously not confirmed because in hindsight we know absolutely nothing about this game. Which is why my excitement is through the roof, but it makes me wonder if these characters do end up getting sent off or possibly retire, go off the grid, or get killed off, who could possibly step up and take the torch from these characters that have been with us for almost 30 years? At first when you hear that, it's something you don't want to believe. And I'm with you on that, but if this series keeps going, these do have to inevitably end. I just think it would be dumb if they went on forever, and I just don't think that's something Capcom can do. They also mentioned that Jill does have slow aging and it might possibly be a thing for Claire and Rebecca as well. On top of Leon and Chris getting infected with the T-Virus and was later on then cured in Resident Evil Death Island, it just makes me wonder if all of them are going to get the slow aging treatment or superpower which shows a lack of confidence in the writing especially with what happened to Ethan. This is where it makes you wonder with what happened with him is if they're just going to stop the series once these stories are done and I'm not going to lie I think it's a bad move and my reasoning behind that is RE7. It's one of the most sold games and saved Resident Evil in itself. Well, one of the most old games and RE. It gets to the point where it's like, the audiences and the consumers first priority isn't really the characters, but so the gameplay, atmosphere, and everything else. That's what made RE7 special in my opinion. Which begs the question of, if a new character will show up later on down the road? Of course, I don't think that's what RE9 should be about. I don't think it'll have this RE6 feeling where everyone is in it, but it can happen since, again, we don't know nothing about the game. And a lot of us want the OG characters back in the spotlight, which is also the reason why I think a lot of people just didn't really like Ethan to begin with, was him getting two straight games and other main characters getting remixed, which are cool, but we want to see new events with them. And CGI movies that nobody really has a deep caring for, unless, you know, someone was trapped into the basement for a very long time. I'm looking at a certain female Resident Evil character, of course. But before I get into the next part, let me ask you this. Would it have been better to have Ethan as the main after the OG stories were done, or was he needed due to how Ari was becoming? Let me know in the comments. Now let's get into the reason why I made this video if the mains are gone. Who can take that torch with them? Of course we can bring in the discussion of brand new characters that Capcom can create. Obviously we have no idea who or what they're about, but if you want true survival horror back, it's really a good way to bring them in just like Ethan. Can you bring in some cameos from OG characters? Possibly, but their story should be done. And I think it'll be a time when that happens to just let go of it. But let me again backtrack to the Ethan point. I get as to why people aren't as fond of Ethan compared to others is because we know for a fact the classic character stories aren't done yet, which does put to shame because I still felt like Ethan did have some untapped potential. And whether people like me saying this or not, he is a huge reason why Resident Evil was saved. Having somebody that wasn't a superhero with roundhouse kicks or just straight up god fists, it felt like the tension was there. You had to conserve and it just felt such refreshing but in a classic way. I know it could have been anyone else instead, but it was him. Now here's the thing. The amount of main characters that have been used recently excluding the remakes have been very limited since it's just been Chris, but either way there may not be many options as to who can lead the series afterwards. But I do have some. These two characters we are completely used to and aware of, and I believe they have a lot of potential. My first pick to really lead this series going forward is Sherry Birkin. She technically is an OG, and she was the first person in Ari to get that effect where she can age slowly. I believe she's around her early 30s as well, and I think there is still a lot of time for her to come back into the series one way or another. And if you need a female lead, She's right there, and people are used to her already with Resident Evil 2 Remake and Resident Evil 6. Next up is someone I think, no matter how people feel about him, you have to bring him back because of who his father is. It's Jake. Listen, I'm not the biggest fan of him, but I can't deny the fact that he should be brought back. I hope after the stories are done, He's in the same boat as Sherry as he had the antibodies for the C-Virus and we know how superhuman he feels. I feel like for these characters specifically, this is where if you want some sort of an action game or just both horror and action blending well together, these two, in my opinion, specifically Sherry, if I had to choose one, would be perfect options for that. For the horror side, that's where new characters can possibly come in. Or maybe another candidate which is another offspring like Jake and Sherry. Moira is definitely another and definitely the least trained of the two, but I don't think many people like her is the problem. I thought her development was pretty solid at the end of Revelations, 
and she was kind of all alone on that island after Claire left, that's when we started to see some development. Maybe she might have something to do with what may happen to Natalia in a future game? We have no idea. For some other people like including Rebecca, Sheva, and a lot of more others that have just been on this island of one-off appearances, it's hard for me to necessarily include them. Rebecca will probably be in the old category by the time. It's fine because I think she's still young. Never mind, I just checked she's in her 40s. But probably can still kick it if Capcom ever wants to make Revelations 3. But yeah, if I truly had to pick one character to come back and lead the series or just have a major part into it, I'll say Sherry. I don't think Capcom will ever end this series, and plus we have more remakes to come with one being heavily rumored and Co Veronica being heavily requested. That's just the overall feeling I have of RE9. I really do feel like it makes sense to end some stories or one maybe. I have no idea. There's a chance it can happen, and again, I don't know who, but if I really had to pick, I'd say Chris or Leon. If they are in the game. They're getting old, man. Maybe they got one more in them. Shout out to Vince Carter, but this may be it. It's gonna suck for a bit, man, but it just happens. That's just the way it goes. Let me know what you guys think. I'll give you guys two questions before this video ends and answer them in the comments below. If one of the main character's stories is ending, who do you believe it'll be? Secondly, if you had to choose somebody to want to have the new lead in the RE franchise, who would it be? If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and hit that subscribe button for more RE content in the near future. And as always, I'll catch you in my next video. Peace out, and much love.